Renate, welcome. Can you tell me what you did before you joined us at Salzburg? Uh, before I worked at the Department of Psychiatry and Neuropsychology of Maastricht University, as well as uh, for the Faculty of Psychology and Education of the Free University in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, as a scientific director of the Center of Brain and Learning, I was involved in uh, learning uh, of the adolescent brain. You are now working for SalesTech within the Learning and Cognition Group of Paul Kirchner. What is your role there? What are you planning to do? I endeavor to uh, use my knowledge about the uh, adolescent uh, brain and its learning capacity and to use that uh, information for the adult brain and uh, its uh, learning environment. My research topic as associate professor concerns the topic brain, lifestyle and learning. What is so special about the adolescent brain? Uh, well, uh, research in the past has shown that the uh, adolescent brain is not matured at age 16 or 18 as has been thought before. Uh, new insights by means of uh, MRI studies, for example, have shown that the uh, adolescent brains um, mature until at least 25 years uh, old. And the prefrontal cortex is the last part of the brain to be matured. That's the part which is responsible for the executive functions like planning, inhibition, uh, looking into the future, uh, organization, concentration skills and so on. Which factors do play a role in brain functioning? Genetic predisposition. Genetic predisposition means that uh, that genetic material which you get from both your parents, uh, so what's in your genes. Uh, research in monocytogenic twins, for example, so that are twins which uh, share exactly the same genetic uh, material, uh, who are raised in the same environment, in most cases by the same parents, who visited the same schools, uh, who had the same food profession, uh, who often have the same uh, friends. Well, research in those twins has shown that even those brains are different from each other. That means that even subtle differences in environmental factors are responsible for those uh, differences in uh, brain composition. Environmental factors which might be uh, important are factors like sleep or uh, nutrition. Adolescents are uh, not willing to get up uh, early, uh, at school they are still very uh, sleepy. Well, research uh, has shown that uh, the melatonin, that's the hormone which is uh, responsible for the feeling of uh, sleep, is secreted later in adolescence. But besides that, the adolescent is often in a kind of growth spurt, what means that there is a, a large dilution uh, effect uh, for that hormone. So the feeling of sleepiness is induced later. Essential fatty acids are important components of all cell membranes in the human body, but also in the uh, cell membranes of the neural tissue. Uh, when you have a cell, around the cell you've got a cell membrane, and in the, uh, that cell membrane you've got the essential fatty acids. They are actually the kind of building blocks within the cell membrane. The more unsaturated uh, the omega-3 fatty acid is, the more uh, fluid the cell membrane is. You told us there are differences between the adolescent brain and the adult brain. How works this out? For example, when you place an adult or an adolescent in an MRI scanner and you ask both of them whether they like to join you to the cinema that evening, you see completely different reactions. Uh, in that adult you see a lot of activity in the prefrontal cortex again. Adolescent, you only see some activity at the temporal areas. Oh yes, that's nice, let's go to the movies. But that adolescent won't think like, oh, I've got homework to do, I have a test next week, I should plan in advance and I should study for that test tonight. The adolescent brain, learning and school performance, environmental factors. It, it would be great if just by, by relative simple interventions you can improve the, the school capacities or the, the cognitive abilities of your own children. Working together with schools 
uh, to make to get a new plans for research um, to, to get the schools really involved but not only the school directions but also the school teachers uh, make them aware of the latest scientific uh, insights get the bridge between uh, science at the one hand and the educational practice at the other uh, hand. What are your future plans, your ultimate goal? Uh, research within the fields of determinants for uh, lifelong learning uh, has to be uh, continued and of course uh, the resulting scientific uh, knowledge has to come uh, available for the general uh, public. <laughs>